Hi, my name is Mitra Manesh. I'm a servant. I serve through teaching, coaching, consulting, or any other way that I can find to share what I know with those who want to know. And this Lights On podcast is one of those ways. It was created with consciousness and mindful living in heart. So join us as we travel through many roads of learning and transformation together. And if you enjoy our podcast, please give us feedback by rating us five star and share us with others if you think they may benefit from it. On behalf of my team, I thank you for your presence. This episode is about uh, mindful parenting. This is part of a workshop that I was doing uh, in collaboration with UCLA Health Mindful Awareness Research Center. And the question that one of the mindful fathers had was, he feels like he has to jump in and uh, stop his child from experiencing pain and being uh, hurt And of course, I'm not talking about physical hurt. These are like just normal hurts of life, emotional hurts of life. And uh, hence, a great discussion was created around uh, what is our role as parents? Where do I jump in? Where do we feel like we need to really rescue our kids? And when do we need to hold back and uh, allow life to do what it does? Great discussion. Hope you enjoy it. Let's take a listen. So what I'm inviting you to do is to really look at the fundamentals of mindful parenting first, because the occasions that you're talking about, that when I find myself on um, my child on uh, drugs, or I find my child in a very unhealthy relationship when they are younger, I'm hoping that you're talking about like a under 18 children, because over 18, there's not much we can do. So uh, we the problem is when we over interfere. When we over talk, then when there is time to actually do something, that means nothing. That's the problem. So what I'm trying to tell you is that make sure these fundamentals are there, that your beliefs around your children are, are healthy. And then, then it becomes matter of discernment. That's what really it comes to that. What do I let go of? And what do I not let go of? And I know as parents, we need to do that. So I remember I let go of the bang, bang of the music. I let go of those things that they hung on themselves. I let go of certain things, but I know because of the business I was in, I wouldn't let my daughters stay overnight before they were eating anywhere. I had Hotel Manesh every weekend. I said, bring everybody. And they were very generous. So we ended up with 18 kids. But it for me, that was a matter of principle. Because I had said okay to, to the look and to the music and to the chains and to all those things, then I had the authority. I had the, the whereabout to say over my dead body on this one. So that's one thing that I want to take home with. And then there are occasions, and believe me, I have been involved in that, that I had to actually just just jump in and just grab them and take them out of a scene. And I have done that. But you can only do that with authority if you have not done that about the the tea they drink and the hair they put up and the T-shirt they wear. So what I'm suggesting is pick and choose and then go in when it's necessary, because For most of us, that would be few times in their lifetime that we have to do that, unless they're really extremely into drugs that um, somebody came to mind that every weekend uh, they have to go and find the child on the streets because he's on drugs like in a very extreme way. But that's that's not every parent. We're talking about, you know, everyday parenting. So how you do that is you gain the authority, you gain the permission by not over interfering, by not overstepping, talking about boundaries. We think the boundaries are always at the child's level. So what is your boundaries? I'm saying, what are my boundaries? Where do I just see and I say, you know, it's okay. I just turn around 
and don't look at it because really at the big scheme of things, it doesn't matter. And if I don't see them as, as extension of me, I'm okay with them not looking the way I want them to look or sounding the way I want them to sound. And then I have the right, I have the power, and I have the authority to jump in when it does matter. The problem that I see is that we have jumped in so many times. First of all, jumping in doesn't mean anything, right? Because we've done it every day. Secondly, it doesn't do anything. But when I haven't done it, and only once, only twice, only three times when it's absolutely necessary, I need to go in and grab them, then I can do that. And I remember having actually these conversations, both with clients and with my own children. I let you do this. I don't say that. You're free to do this. This area, uh uh-uh. Why? I cannot discuss that with you. You don't have the capacity to understand. The same way a two-year-old doesn't understand why if they have fever and cough, they shouldn't be eating ice cream. You will not understand it. But I will one day explain it to you. But as a mother, I'm using my authority not overusing. That's the key. Not overusing. Because you won't let me. If I, every day I tell you what to do, you just say, shh, Mitra, be quiet. But if I come every eight months and I give you some feedback or even tell you, Matthew, absolutely not. Don't do that. If I have a role in your life, then you accept it. Why we overdo it? Because it goes back to the belief. Because we believe. And, and you said some words that I'm wanting to actually explore. We don't want them to get hurt. Well, you shouldn't have brought them to this world then, Matthew. Come on. What do you mean? Do you know anybody who never ever got hurt? Like, which planet? Not this planet. So please don't have these romantic ideas about your children. I want them to have absolute comfort. Why? Why? And then the last one, the most common one, I want them to be happy. My answer to that is none of your business. You go be happy. You show them instead of tell them. It is so good to see parents that are happy somehow. That's my next course. But like somehow they're not always complaining and, you know, somehow they hold some sense of joy in life. But... I want them to be happy. That's an internal work. That's it. It's not your job. Your job is to care for them in a very, very conscious way. Your job is at best to manage your own mind so that your little hurt, unattended, unheard child does not show up in the conversation or mine. We all have them. But prevent them from getting hurt? Like, what? Didn't we all learn through hurt? Didn't we all fall? It is not, okay, here's the perfect statement for you. It is not the falling that we want to stop. It is the getting up that we want to show them. Of course, they're going to fall. They have to fall. That's how we learned everything we learned. But the question is, how well can I get up? And that's what the whole difference between those who can handle life and those who can't is. It's not like I have a wonderful life and and somebody else doesn't. It's just, I get up, I get up, I say, oh, that was a, you know, oh, that was a hard fall, but it's okay. Let me just come back. So that romantic idea of parenting, of we don't want them to get hurt. We don't want them to make mistakes. We want them to make wise mistakes. We want them to learn from their hurts. Those are much healthier statements and much doable, to be honest with you, because when you go extreme, then you can't even do the healthy things. Never, ever get hurt. Really? If somebody went on the uh, stage and said, you know, had a great life. My parents took care of everything, bought me a home, gave me a wife, just like car. Everything was good. Never had any problems. Let me tell you something. And they say, please calm down. What do you mean? You have nothing to say. You haven't lived a life. What are you talking about? And you see how, you know, when people become successful, they exaggerate their their misfortune of the past. 
Have you seen that? Do you know why? Because there's deliciousness. There is mm, yum in having gone through something and having made it. So teach them how to get up. Don't prevent them from falling. That's an impossibility that makes you feel bad about your parenting. And even if you succeed, which most of us can't succeed, it will make them a very vulnerable, weak, unlived person in life. If the subject of mindful parenting is of interest to you, and if you would like to dive deeper into it, you can access the full course at mitramanesh.com slash store. Hope this episode answered the question or two for you or provoked and inspired questions in you. I'm so grateful you showed up and listened up. Until the next time, be well and stay curious.